Hello everybody, this is Michael Lee, back with more Lumberjack fire safety work. Let's get it. It's the morning. It's a little break in the storm, but it's going to start raining here again in a few hours. Should be pouring rain. It's cold. Perfect time to burn, middle of winter. You all remember where we left off? We're burning. We're tor torching the burn piles. So we did two up there. We did one, two down here for a total of four burn piles completed. Today, we're going to torch this one, that one, the one in the background closer to the driveway, and then that one uh, in the center, way over there. Okay, so we're gonna try to get those four going. That one may not go, uh, it's pretty wet. If that one doesn't go, we'll do this one. The purpose of doing burn piles is to reduce the excessive fuel loads of the land to prevent catastrophic fire. Gotta get the land more open and healthy. Gotta make sure the connection's tight so no gas leaks. These newer propane tanks won't allow you to burn if the connection's not gas tight. These newer propane tanks also just want you to turn on a tiny bit, otherwise it won't let you go either. Okay, that should be good. Now we're ready. Okay, just turn it on a little bit. That's it. And then crank it up to a blue flame. It's still early in the morning, uh, but we really want to get these four burn piles going as fast as we can so that they'll be smoldering by the afternoon. We don't want rip warm fires, you know, deep into the afternoon. The good thing about using these propane torches is even if the burn piles are wet, you can still get them going without dumping diesel or oil gas mix on her. I think I just found the spot. I think that'll do the trick. Sometimes it takes me two or three uh, attempts to find the right, right spot where there's the right combination of branches and twigs all coming together to accept the fire. Now I wanna go into a little more detail about what we're doing here. This is Lumberjack Fire Safety Work. I want everybody to understand the process when you're working on a large property. I work on about eight large contiguous properties up here and I plan everything out to make the land more healthy, open, sustainable, and fire resistant. The first thing I do when I come onto a property is I survey it and make a plan. The next thing I do is I weed whack. After that, I brush cut. Okay, I use a professional grade weed whacker and brush cutter with an interchangeable uh, weed whacker line and circular saw blade. And the blade is what I use for brush cutting. After that, I survey uh, the trees to see if there's any dead or sick trees, especially near the house. I cut those and then I work out with my chainsaw, falling, limbing, and bucking dead trees and excessive fuel loads, sick trees, in kind of a concentric circles going out uh, away from the 
house. Kind of like the reverse of peeling an onion. And uh, the stuff that's no good for firewood, I make burn piles out of. The wood that's uh, still good for firewood, I split by hand and stack by hand into nice uh, firewood piles uh, for the property owner. Um, so we're at like, you know, there's the big firewood pile over there and I made another big firewood pile up there. I made about six cords on this property. So the firewood's done. We're kind of at like the finishing, the grand finale stages here on this property and we're tor torching the burn piles. And once again, the, the burn piles is to remove the excessive fuel loads in a safe and controlled, managed manner in order to prevent, prevent catastrophic fires. It's much better to burn the excessive fuel loads like this and do some uh, preventative maintenance rather than to allow catastrophic fires to burn through and kill everything, destroy the forest and woods, and destroy people's livelihoods and homes. So it's much more responsible to do it this way than to do nothing and just wait for catastrophic fires to come through and destroy everything. Does that make sense? Okay, let's go. It's good, let's go get the next one. When you take off your Made in Canada Big Bill 24 ounce double layer uh, wool lumberjack shirt, make sure you hang it off the ground a good distance away from your fire so you don't burn holes through with colds. You gotta check out this other one. <laughs> I can feel the heat coming off of it way over here. Look how beautiful that is. What a perfect burn, burn pile, huh? Just started sprinkling. Oh, my backpack's a little bit close. I gotta move my backpack, everybody. All right, this one's going now. It's chaos here. I'm a one-man show, man. This is chaos.
Okay, it's raining now. One, two, and now we're torching our third. Ugh. I think I just found the spot. Man, this one was soaking wet. We're not gonna torch this one. It's uh, too dirty and wet. We'll do the far one over there uh, before you get up that levee and before you get to the flume. That'll be a good one to burn since it's raining right now. It's the one that's closest to the, the forest over there. So it'd be the most responsible way to burn it would be on a day like today when it's cold and raining so we'll do that instead of torching this one so after this one gets going we'll go way over there Okay, we're good. Let's go get the next one.
This one's burning like a champ now. Look at our friend burning away in the back there. Took a while for it to get going, but it's burning like a champ now, huh? Oh, it's raining now. Oh, this is just great, everybody. This is great. 